Today there's going to be a debate over the constitutionality of the process, whether it's constitutional to try and try to remove from office a former president. Does President Biden have any concerns that this trial could set a dangerous precedent for the institution of the presidency? Well, uh, President Biden, uh, we put out a statement uh, following the conclusion of the House vote just a couple of weeks ago, and he made clear in that statement that he felt the process should proceed as uh, as uh, history, uh, you know, and, and many laws uh, pre predetermine, uh, and he is going to wait for the Senate to determine the outcome of this. But, uh, you know, his view is that his role is should be currently focused on addressing the needs of the American people, putting people back to work, addressing the pandemic. Could this issue is constitutional? I don't think that's for me or uh, us to opine on. Obviously, he said that the process should proceed, and it's doing exactly that. Let me ask you about the COVID relief package. Yesterday, the Ways and Means Committee Democrats proposed limiting the $1,400 direct payments to those making $75,000 or less. Is that something that President Biden supports? And does he have any concerns that progressives might not be on board with that? Well, the president has conveyed uh, from the beginning of this discussion that he's open to having a discussion about the thresholds. Uh, he has been firm in his resolve that uh, Americans should uh, be made whole on the $2,000 checks, which of course would mean uh, be, uh, be maintaining his firmness on the $1,400 checks, right? But there's been a discussion about the thresholds and what those should look like. And he doesn't feel that uh, families making over $250,000 a year should be the target of this relief. But there is a scale up, right? And even in the recent negotiations from the 75 and from the 150, uh, it's just uh, will reach a certain uh, top threshold where uh, people would not receive relief. Has he determined whether he would support that? Does he support 75000 as being the threshold? It's not the threshold. That's uh, that's kind of who would receive the maximum amount. There is then a scale up beyond that. Uh, these negotiations are, are ongoing. Uh, we support and certainly support uh, the discussions as, as they're happening. And certainly his view is that these should be, he's open to the discussion about making them more targeted and ensuring that people who need relief, relief the most receive the relief. The, the World Health Organization said today that it was extremely unlikely that the coronavirus escaped the lab in Wuhan. Um, and I'm just wondering, especially now that we've uh, sort of resumed our participation in the WHO, if the administration agrees with that um, assessment. Yeah, we have uh, obviously seen those reports, as I mean, the public reporting on it. Uh, we're looking forward to receiving the report and the data from the WHO investigation. We haven't looked at the data specifically ourselves, uh, so we'd like to do that. Uh, we've expressed our concerns regarding the need for full transparency and access from China and the WHO to all information regarding the earliest days of the pandemic. Uh, but. Uh, we weren't involved directly in the implementation of this investigation. And again, we'll just look forward to reviewing the findings in detail. Uh, go ahead. Oh, we'll Hi. come back to you, Caitlin. Sorry. Go ahead. Two questions on schools. You opened mm -hmm. up talking about reopening schools as mm -hmm. being a priority for the administration. Are there any discussions within the administration of providing these kind of rapid tests that are being produced by Illum and other companies to help that move quicker, to get those tests to local, uh, to the local school systems within the states? Well, our, our focus really at this point in time is um, uh, waiting for the CDC guidelines to come out and give schools across the country, school districts across the country, the first medical and scientific recommendations and guidelines that have been given from the federal level. Uh, and obviously, once those are put out publicly and concluded, uh, we will look for ways to um, work with uh, states to uh, ensure that schools are getting the resources they need. That's part of why we proposed funding in the American Rescue Plan. But we want to wait to see what the health and uh, medical experts uh, have in those guidelines to ensure we're directing those resources in the right way or working with states to do exactly that. Um, and then you talked about hopes for transparency from China, and you, you talked about the need to get that data from the World Health Organization. Earlier in the pandemic, um, you know, you know, April and May, the, there was a lot of criticism that the World Health Organization was praising China for its transparency at a moment when China certainly wasn't. Are there any type of reforms now that the United States has rejoined that President Biden would like to see from the World Health Organization? Well, um, you know, one of the reasons, of course, that we want to take a look at the data ourselves is because we were not 
um, involved in the uh, planning and implementation of the investigation. Uh, we also feel, of course, we support, we rejoin the World Health Organization, but that it's imperative that we have our own team of experts on the ground um, in our embassy in Beijing and otherwise to make sure we have eyes and ears on the ground. Uh, but I don't have any more reforms or anything to announce for you at this point in time. Uh, and then um, back to the CBO report that mm -hmm. Peter was asking a second ago. Yep. Uh, is there a specific plan for anyone who would lose their job if uh, the minimum wage is increased, or is it just a hope that CBO is wrong about those numbers? Well, remember that the plan, the American Rescue Plan, why there was a score of any component of it, would put millions of people to work. And that is also something that outside economists and many studies have shown. And so our whole objective here is to um, uh, make sure I should I should say uh, make sure we are getting people the assistance they need. Make sure we are putting uh, vaccines in the arms of Americans, and make sure we are um, you know reopening schools. I, and let me just remedy something I just said. The president is going to roll out a Build Back Better agenda, a jobs package, in the coming weeks. Heart, part of his objective is to combine with this package. Uh, to make sure we are not only addressing the pandemic, but we are also reinvigorating the economy. So his goal with all of these plans is to work with Congress to put people back to work. And the minimum wage, increasing the minimum wage, is a way to ensure that workers are pulled out of poverty, that millions of workers who are Make, you know, doing honest work and making a, um, you know, making an honest living are not living on the poverty line. He thinks that's right, and that's something that should happen. Uh, and then you mentioned the, the sort of goal of opening up schools swiftly and safely. Mm -hmm. Could you help us understand what the White House is or what the president's definition of open schools is? Does it mean teachers in classroom teaching students in classroom, or does it just mean kids in classroom with a remote screen? Help us understand. Sure. His goal that he set is to have the majority of schools, so more than 50 percent, open uh, by day 100 uh, of his presidency. And that means uh, some teaching in classrooms. So at least one day a week, hopefully it's more. And obviously it is as much as is safe in each school and local district. When you say some teaching, that's you didn't use the same majority qualifier there. You just have to have some teaching in school, some teachers in school, not the majority of teachers in school in the majority of classrooms. Well, teaching at least one day a week um, in the majority of schools by day 100. Okay, and that's in-person teaching? In-person teaching, yes.